The Portals We All Make, Part 3 Hello again. I'm Marie Swaru. During the first days of December 2022, Alanim's Hashmalim and Shinanim operatives on the surface at the time, reported that they had been observing a certain street in a city, and more specifically a certain segment only 50 meters long of that street. It is a suburban, well-paved, comparatively low traffic, straight two-way street with an unusually high rate of constant accidents, at least three of them fatal runovers, two of them a short time apart. And in another occasion a man was run over by a lorry, or truck full of soft drinks, while slowly moving in reverse in plain daylight, leaving the young man crippled and in a wheelchair for life. Also there are an unreally high, and constant amount of motorcycle crashes and accidents, including police motorcycles in three occasions. But the curious thing is that most of those crashes are simply against the ground and not against anything else, their riders losing control and ending up on the floor for no apparent reason at all, sometimes blaming the surface as it is very smooth and slippery when wet. But those accidents occur when dry as well, and in plain daylight, and always within that same segment. Besides motorcycle accidents, many car accidents occur as well in that same segment of the street, no less than five times cars have crashed against parked ones, twice against the same parked truck severely damaging it the second time, and countless other traffic incidents, mostly involving moving vehicles of all kinds all this happening in the same 50-metre segment of the street. At first anyone would think that all this is happening because of normal risk factors, but that segment is just about the same as any other in that whole street, and it is itself just about the same as any other street in that area. And as observed, being a straight, there is very good visibility there where drivers can see incoming vehicles up to 200 metres away in either direction from the centre of that 50-metre problematic segment, and vehicles are parked only on one side of the street. There is no obvious physical reasons why accidents would occur there, on the contrary, the whole area should be statistically safe. Some months before, a strange gust of wind was reported in the same city that is not known for having especially strong winds. I mean one isolated gust, one, that travelled through some places in that same city destroying things, billboards and knocking down trees. You could follow its path of destruction just looking at the damage it caused. It travelled through the city one night, and tore a strong tree off its roots right before or at that specific 50-metre segment of the road I mentioned above, and disappeared. The last damage that gust of wind caused was that tree that was downed, or dropped in front of the exit of a house, just before the owners had to move their vehicle out to go and solve a very serious situation they had in that very moment, also bringing down with it telephone and electricity cables. As if the gust of wind knocked down that tree on purpose to block them from trying to solve their serious problem. They live within that 50 meter long segment. Considering all this, all together and not only seeing isolated incidents. Alanim and her crew, in Starship Talika, decided that all this was not normal and dispatched a 110 cm spherical drone to go there and recollect information using its advanced sensors. The drone overflew the entire area, mapping its entire frequency map, energy fluctuations, and variations to then proceed to study that 50-meter-long segment of the street closely, detecting all the subtle energy and its frequency dynamics and variations. What the drone found out was hair raising. There is a huge invisible portal right there in that 50 meter segment, a dip in frequency, where the average vibration of matter in the whole street and area drops dramatically, right there, explaining all the accidents. The drone proceeded to recollect all the data to know from where and what was generating the portal. 
It is a doorway to the underworld, to the lower astral realms I was talking about in my very last video, with all kinds of entities looking and coming in and out from it, but apparently staying within the affecting range of the portal. As I was saying in my previous video, when a person is a frequency match to something on the other side, some form of interaction can occur. Everything is frequency concurrency. Astral entities, formerly in a human body or just animals, can control their frequency to a certain point, when they concentrate in trying to reach the frequency of a person in the material world. So a living person that for whatever reason is holding a low vibratory state, can be reached by one or another of these entities. These lower astral entities do feed from low and dense energy that is given off from living organisms when suffering occurs. These lower astral entities have a very weak connection to source, or not at all, because they are simply too far from it in their existential frequency range, so as understood by the Tejitans, what keeps them existing is the creative attention of beings with a strong, or stronger connection to source. In other words, you need to give them attention for them to continue to exist. When a living person, or creature in the material world is in its average range of thought, its attention is dispersed, jumping from one thought to the next. In that state its creative and manifestation capacity is not concentrated on one thing. But when a person or creature is in fear all its attention will flow towards that what it fears. We manifest what we concentrate on, we manifest whatever holds our consistent attention the most, fear and suffering act as a concentration instrument that will bring into being more of whatever we are fearing as we are focused on it. Those entities feed off that attention being it as direct attention to them to strengthen their mild and weak astral body, or with the constant suffering of beings with a strong connection to source, as most humans have. A good example of this are night visitors, or night visitations, those that are linked to sleep paralysis such as incubus and succubus among others. They want you to be afraid of them, that's why they are called night terrors, and they know how to induce that fear state in people. When you fear them they stay with you and become stronger and repeatedly come back to haunt your sleep night after night, but if you face them fearlessly, and you connect to source consciousness with your thoughts, feeling and thinking loving emotions, and imagining that you are covered in a ball of high frequency yellow light, those entities will not come back to bother you again. You become useless to them as you don't give off any of that fear-concentrated attention they need and crave. And they will go bother someone else, as I've said before, someone holding a lower vibratory state. Going back to that problematic 50-meter-long segment of that city street, what the Tejitans concluded is that those entities are causing all the accidents, connecting and interfering with living people who are holding a low enough vibratory state, making them a concurrency with those entities and their needs. But it is the people themselves the ones who are creating it all, they are giving those entities their attention, unwillingly or even unconsciously, so that segment became some sort of etheric trap for passerbys. We can only speculate about how exactly they cause those accidents, but it is very possible that they are distracting their victims in a crucial moment when driving, or they are causing an involuntary muscular twitch, or they are pushing their victims, perhaps they place some invisible object in their path, or some kind of variant of all the above, because they can manipulate the material world, although somewhat in a limited manner and depending on energetic circumstances. We observe this next example, a man was riding a bicycle on the sidewalk right there in the problematic segment of the street, a line of parked cars separated him from the main road, he then sees an opening between the parked cars and decides to use it to ride off the sidewalk into the main road, a taxi cab approached in the same direction, 
invisible to the cyclist because of the line of parked cars. Right when the cyclist decides to turn his head to see if there was any incoming traffic before entering the main road, a large leaf on the ground moved right in front of his path distracting the cyclist in the crucial split second he was going to turn his head to watch for incoming traffic. As the bicycle continued to move he now descended into the main road without looking for traffic first and right into the path of the taxi cab, who had to slam his brakes, leaving six feet of tyre marks on the ground. The cyclist was only a few inches, and a split second away from being run over. As you can observe, those entities don't need much energy to cause an accident, all they needed was enough to move a single leaf on the ground at the precise and exact moment to cause a distraction. But why was it there in that exact spot? The Tejitans with the drone continued to explore the area, reading the entire frequency map. They soon found another strong frequency fall, or dip right in the house that is exactly at the center of that 50-meter segment. Inside the house and including all its area. That frequency dip or fall, flows or moves out of the front of that house feeding the portal, lowering the frequency of the entire segment of the street. It was discovered that the house is inhabited by a very numerous problematic family that holds extremely matrixed values. And as reported by the neighbors those people hold a lot of feelings of envy and ill wishes against them all, and they all have had constant problems and disagreements with them, especially with the mother and her youngest son, a bully. They also hold a very strong superiority complex based on their militancy in a local church, as reported. And who knows what else goes on inside that house. Observing the energetic dynamic of the entire area, and analyzing all the scientific data, the Tejitans concluded that the portal is being fed and kept open, by the low frequency being generated by that particular family. Interestingly enough, the frequency of the families who live in the two houses at each side of these problematic people, hold a high frequency on one side and a very high frequency on the other, creating two large peaks of high frequency next to the large pit of low frequency of the problematic house. The limits of the low frequency area of the negative house are those of their physical house itself, meaning that the walls that separate them from the adjacent high frequency homes would be the limits of their influence. Etheric and energetic dynamics don't care about walls, walls cannot contain them but the walls do act as a mental, or psychological barrier, or territory for the people who are living inside them. The idea in the minds of the people living there, is what that defines the limits of the area regarded as theirs, and the frequency inside that area as well. The frequency of a house is the frequency of its inhabitants. And its limits are the limits of the beliefs of those inhabitants as well. The basic theory about how this portal came to be, is that the people inside that low-frequency house bleed off their low frequency towards the street in front of them, because there is where they focus a lot of their attention, in front of their house, their connection to the outside world. And from there on, the entities use that low-frequency spot in the street for their feeding purposes, as any other opportunistic beings would do. The drone proceeded to study the rest of the area and city, discovering many other portals mainly where they are expected to be found, for example inside and over government buildings, hospitals, and police stations. We also studied another phenomena going on everywhere, all over the world. We noticed that in street intersections the average frequency of an area would be considerably lower but not in a stable manner. When there was no traffic the frequency of the middle of a street intersection would be only slightly lower than the average, but when a vehicle approached to negotiate the intersection, the frequency there clearly dropped, 
and it went even further down when multiple vehicles were passing there all negotiating who was to cross first, as it happens in any other simple intersection anywhere else on earth. And the intersection's frequency was going down with the vehicles that were passing through the area with no problems, just naturally passing by. The Tejitans concluded that the simple repetitive small amount of stress the drivers and the passengers were feeling as they passed the intersection, due to their normal caution while driving, was enough to accumulate a frequency-lowering effect right there, one driver taking caution after another, continuously sending a manifestation pulse stress message to the frequency field in the area creating a harmonics of a frequency that lowers the intersection as the final result. This energetic dynamic goes on not only in every intersection but also in every location that has a continuous stress-causing effect upon the people who are in that area or pass through it. This accounts for the very low frequency of areas where suffering is accumulated, such as jails and hospitals, as extreme examples but this effect happens everywhere. The good news is that this effect also takes place with the positive high-frequency locations that constantly make people feel good. This effect clearly demonstrates and exemplifies how the base frequency of not only an entire area but also of a whole planet and beyond is formed, creating the average planetary frequency as a result. But even inside the planet, inside a low-frequency area, we can find high-frequency bubbles, created by their inhabitants, little oasis of joy where a personal world is evolving. These bubbles end up affecting and lifting the frequency of the entire area they are in. And even more so when the people who are creating them are strong and true to their high-frequency beliefs and are true to themselves not letting the outside world affect them. The same way someone can be a frequency match to evil entities, a person can develop a high-frequency bubble that not only protects him against evil beings and bad events, but make him a match to nicer people, good events, and ultimately to light beings and spirit guides. Astral beings can create events as an accident using subtle methods, such as moving a leaf in the exact right moment, enough to distract a person in the precise split second his attention was needed to avoid a hideous accident. So always watch your frequency and your thoughts, they end up dictating your day, and in the end will dictate your fate. I know bad things happen to everyone, and it is impossible to always have a good day. It is not about being able to avoid all bad things, because they will happen regardless of what we do. What is important is how you let them affect you. You will be thrown to the ground many times during your life, but what matters is what you do to get up again. There is nothing more powerful than a person who has fallen and reached rock bottom in his or her life and is now in the process of rebuilding himself or herself. Be resilient. No one can touch you if you are, astral nor physical. You have control over your frequency, and of your destiny. Be wise. Be cautious. And over all be happy. With much love. Marie Soiru.